It's a cosmic mystery why it took so long for the venerable Arkham Horror board game series to get its first video game adaptation. That makes it a shame that Arkham Horror Mother's Embrace is such a middling digital debut. Its particular take on Lovecraftian horror feels faithful in the details, but uninterested in challenging some of its own troubling preconceptions, or even being very scary. Couple that with softball puzzles and pushover combat encounters, and this dark ritual feels largely harmless. Mother's Embrace gives you control of a group of investigators who hop between Prohibition-era locales in search of clues. Solving the mystery behind a weird force that threatens all of reality without being consumed by it yourself requires a balance of both physical and mental fortitude, but every move forces you to make tough choices that look to disrupt that balance. Your tale here is divided into scenarios focused on single locations with a specific objective, like finding an old voodoo priest in New Orleans. You'll stroll around each environment questioning the locals and investigating every highlighted point of interest in the hope that they add clues to your notebook. The overt nature of these activities rarely makes you feel like you're doing any actual detective work, though, making you more of a clue vacuum than a gumshoe. It's not as simple as hoarding everything you find, of course. Many interactions have multiple options with only one correct answer. Should you pick that lock or just break it? Choose poorly and you're punished with a tick on the Mythos Clock, a mechanical manifestation of existential dread. After five ticks, the old gods send you a stern message in the form of things like combat debuffs or stolen inventory items. This adds an element of risk to searching a new location, but the consequences are never harsh enough to dissuade you from always trying anyway. Each investigator has their own specialty to reduce that risk even further, dropping a hint toward the right answer when certain complex interactions arise. Federal agent Roland Banks knows his way around logic puzzles, for example, but their strengths are basically random bonuses, as there's no real way to plan a party composition around what a scenario might hold. Where party organization really matters most is when the snooping stops and the shooting starts. The Baldur's Gate 3 style combat revolves around spending your sleuth's action points to take down foes like cultists and tentacle creatures. Weapons and magic come in all shapes and sizes, and their action point cost depends on both the weapon itself and the proficiency of the investigator using it. A gun that takes parapsychologist Agatha Crane four points to shoot only takes three for jazz trumpeter and apparent crack shot Jim Culliver, for example. This doesn't affect the strategy of most combat scenarios, though. So long as you have ammo, guns are usually the best option no matter the wielder. They do great damage from far enough away that the largely simplistic and dull enemies rarely pose a threat. Towards the end of the campaign, you'll have more consumable healing items and ammunition than you'd ever reasonably need against such unworthy opponents. Instead, managing sanity proves to be the biggest challenge in Mother's Embrace. You're forced to make sanity checks fairly regularly, some caused by reasonably disturbing sights like a dead body on a glyph drawn in blood. However, many make far less sense. Why would the fibers of your mind be fraying when you read that a body has gone missing from a graveyard in a newspaper? If any given investigator's sanity meter drops to zero, then they gain a trauma, a debuff that cripples them until you let them rest between scenarios. As they pile up, traumas can become real detriments, making them more compelling threats than any monster. The investigators themselves are largely one-note caricatures, be it the somber gravedigger Will Yorick or the sassy dilettante Jenny Barnes. They have a reliable stock of amusing puns and one-liners, but outside of a bit of initial exposition, these characters have no real arcs or compelling motives. The overall story is a rote Lovecraftian murder mystery that would have benefited greatly by breaking away from some of the genre's unfortunate trappings in more meaningful ways. Mothers embraces inclusion of black protagonists, despite the eponymous writer's noted disdain for most people of color, is a welcome step forward. On the other hand, it's not a big enough one to also include a more nuanced depiction of mental health patients than the genre usually gets, reducing them to either blubbering husks or violent monsters with little in between. All the gore and intrigue of the story's gruesome events are taken at face value, too, with almost no examination of its themes to mean something deeper about the human condition, as the best Cthulhu stories usually do. But while the story itself is only skin deep, it at least looks great while telling it. Apart from some generic animations, the costumes and character designs really stand out, and the use of color and lighting does a great job of setting the otherworldly mood, especially towards the end of its six or so hour adventure. You can replay Mother's Embrace after your first playthrough with a new starting investigator as well, but there's not much reason to do so, as nothing significant will change besides some dialogue. 
Arkham Horror Mothers embraces a passable translation of the mythos that board games, books, and graphic novels have been telling and retelling for decades, but it stops just short of making it feel new or modern. That goes doubly for the repetitive and simple combat it throws at you between sections of uninspired detective work. If you're hoping this might sate your Lovecraftian hunger for an Arkham Horror video game, Mother's Embrace will leave that digital void disappointingly empty. For more Cthulhu adventure games, check out our reviews of Call of Cthulhu or The Sinking City. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.